Pennsylvania High School Swimming Championships are about to begin, and I wanted to do a little preview show. You've got a friend in Pennsylvania, and some of the things and stories that I hope to tell are unofficial. They're my opinions, and I've invited everybody to join me in highlighting their athletes. I don't have a lot of input, but that's okay. I do have some quality materials that I've gleaned from various websites, as well as our WPIAL championships, which were District 7. I was able to broadcast the AA and AAA meet, and it was a fantastic experience. It's on the N National Federation High School Network. You can check it out, NFHS. So if you're a subscriber there, go take a peek. There are some Titans going to be in this meet, and I have some stories to tell. One of the things that really puzzles me is that we have AAA for the bigger schools, AA for the smaller schools, and sadly, the two don't meet. We've got in our division the first two swimmers in the small school category in the girls 200 freestyle would have finished first and second had they been in the AAA meet. But they didn't compete that way. It's sort of separated. So one of the things that I think we really should think about in Pennsylvania, as well as other states, I do the same in Ohio, the same in Colorado, would be to have a meet of champions. They use that word or that title in New Jersey where you could take the very best swimmers from the one class against the very best swimmers from the other class. It'd be easier to do it as a mid-season all-star meet, and perhaps we could roll in some NIL opportunities for the kids and the teams so that it, we could have a televised event with um, some all-stars. There had been in the past a post-state championship meet when it was held at Penn State, it was a club meet. That's also a possibility, but I'd love it to be a high school meet. There's a number of reasons for this, and we can talk about that later online. But for now, let's get into some of the other side stories that you might be able to witness. There are four, if not six, or seven, or eight, or nine different meets. There are different sessions, right? And the boys and the girls are split, and they don't get to see each other. And sometimes that momentum can really be helpful. There's a fast boy swimmer, and then bang, the girl goes a fast girl swimmer. That's fabulous, and you get some team momentum built. But here, we have double A, triple A, diving separate. They don't get to see each other. So if we were doing a meet of champions, we could pull together the fastest boys and the fastest girl swimmers, and they would be able to see each other and witness and cheer and, and be a part of that experience too. Case in point, 2023's WPIAL Boys Championship team was Kiski area. They won the meet for the first time ever. And this year, for the first time ever, the Kiski area girls won the WPIL AA meet, first time ever. But I think there was some of that rubbing off where the, the girls last year could see and visualize and understand, hey, if they can do it, we can do it too. So there's definitely some program and momentum that builds between the boys and girls. So I would love to see an opportunity where the teams, boys and girls, could see each other swim a little more, whereas our state championship, and for all good reasons, is very fragmented and very split among different places. Like, hey, you know, the boys and the girls win their Whippeal championships and maybe state championships too, again, but they're isolated and they don't get to really cheer and celebrate and, and be part of that. Whereas if we had then a final meet, they could do it. Now, when you go to the Olympic trials and national championships these days, there's a prelims, and then a semifinals, 
and then a finals. So you have to do your event three times. I don't think that's out of the question for our weekend at the state championships. We could have our state championships the way it is now, prelims and championships, and then you could have that meta meet where you do one more time, boys and girls together, Sunday after the championships or the next day. Okay, so let's talk about some of the meat basics. Individual points go from 20 points for first place down to 16th place, one point. Relay points are double, so that a first place relay gets 40 points. And here's the table down to two points. Now I had to use this and I calculated the meat results. Based on the seed times, the psych sheet regarding the meet events for swimming. No diving points were in my calculations. So the grand final, and I've used chat GPT to help calculate these numbers. And boy, it makes some mistakes. Anyways, in the AAA girls meet, we're looking at Fox Chapel, 199 points, Wilson, 191, Upper Dublin, 184, Hatboro Horsham from District 1, 177 points, North Allegheny's coming in at fifth, 175 points, which is 24 points behind Fox Chapel. But when we had the district championships, North Allegheny scored a load of points, more than 25 points. They could easily make this up and jump to the head of the class based on diving points. And this is the first year, thank goodness, that they brought back the 11 dive list for the state championships. Hooray for that. We were able to overcome some weird decisions in the past to shrink at the, the just a six dive competition. So I'm all in favor of that. And thank God for um, excellent leadership among our, our swimming community and our diving community to bring back the 11 dive list. So we've got um, North Allegheny. I should probably make this a little bit larger. Here are the top 20 teams. I'll expand the text size and I'll put all of this stuff onto yeah, let me just put it onto the um, the web page, and then you'll see it and be able to understand. So Fox Chapel scores a lot of points, but so does our North Allegheny and Mount Lebanon, 158, Upper St. Clair, 144. So we got four out of the top 10 teams are from the WPIL. Jumping over to the girls, 2A, we have a little bit of a different situation, of course. New teams, new um, breakdown. Mont Pleasant High School is um, the number one seed in the 200 medley relay. But let's jump all the way down to where we had the top 10 teams. Mont Pleasant wins 100 projection, 154 points. Northgate, second, also a District 7 team, 130 points. Cathedral Prep. 129. I think that was also with a merger not too long ago with Villa. Kiski area, the team that won our District 7 championship, comes in at fourth, 117 points. Their boys squad was last year's championship. Indiana, PA, the Little Indians are at fifth or 100 points. Then comes Springfield Township from District 7, three point. It comes in at seventh. They're also a District 7 team. York Suburban from District 3 is at 95 points. Then Lewisburg, Dallas, Quaker Valley, Slippery Rock. So those are the top 10 teams on projections. I'll put this onto the web page as far as projections. We'll see how they fare in the end. But let's go over this event by event, starting with the 200-yard medley relay, the top team. Seated wise is um, Wilson, a blistering 142.88. North Allegheny seated fourth, Parkland's third. Wilson, Upper Dublin, Parkland, North Allegheny. 
but they're um, swimming in a time that is generally with the big schools in the relays, they're going to swim faster than the smaller schools. So Mont Pleasant is um, seated with a um, 147.2 as the top seed. And the 147.2 would not make the um, North Allegheny seated um, was faster. I have to scroll over to see what it is. 144. So they're off by a couple seconds. Okay. But in the um, 200 medley relay, we got Mont Pleasant, Freeport, Cathedral Prep, Indiana, Springfield, Hampton. Hampton has a, um, a great showing um, as well. And we'll see how they do um, at States. 200 freestyle, fastest seed, North Penn swimmer, junior, Maddie Falskett. Then comes Hershey, Upper Dublin, Fox Chapel, Sarah Pasquella. She's going to be a commit for Pitt, is his fourth seed. Um, she's at 151. Meanwhile, and this is interesting, in girls 200 free, double A, Lily King, Mount Pleasant, 146. 0.01. Elsie Narduzzi from Northgate, a senior that's going to go to the Ohio State, 148.15. Both of those times, one and two, the seeds in double A are faster than any of the seeds in triple A. Lily King, by the way, is going to NC State, but not for another year. She's still a junior. Then comes um, a third. Eliza Miller is a triathlete, um, track athlete as well. She comes in a third on the double A 151, which puts her around um, Sarah's time in the um, in the triple A. Then you jump to the 200 IM for double A. The number one seed is Laney Sheets. Laney also won the 100 backstroke in a um, interesting case where the touch went deeper than the touch pad and they went back after the award ceremony and um, fixed the event. But in girls, 200 IM, double A, Laney Sheets, sophomore from Hampton, a twin, her sister's in the event too, is seated with a 20302. Next comes the Shadyside Academy freshman, Ava Jokums, um, 20307, very close race there. Um, then comes Lydia um, Gonzalez from Dallas, a Lewisburg swimmer. The fifth swimmer is a knock swimmer from District 7, Gianna, and then um, a Cathedral Prep, and then a Freeport swimmer. So there's a number of good representatives in the WPIL and the 200 IM. Meanwhile, on the girls' AAA, the um, Hatsboro Horsham District 1 swimmer, Jaya, Annie Jaya, is um, now a junior, and she's lightning fast, 20206. This whole team is really going to rock it forward. They um, had won some um, events in the past state championships. And then comes uh, Marion Parkland. Um, the North Allegheny, Danny Hickson's the fifth seed. So um, Upper St. Clair also has the ninth seed in the 200 IM. Moving ahead to the girls 53 is um, Sylvia Roy, Mount Lebanon swimmer. She's seated with a 2284, followed by Unionville from District 1, a state college swimmer. Then fourth is another Upper St. Clair District 7 swimmer, Caitlin Connors. She's a senior, 23-18. Then it's um, all the way down to the next is a Peters Township. And there's some, let's talk about new coaches, um, different coaches. Peters Township. The new coach at um, Bethel Park. Um, Mercy jumped the Quaker Valley that had been at um, Oakland Catholic. So Oakland Catholic, Central Catholic has new coaches. And um, 
there had been a switch over from at Fox Chapel and um, also Franklin Regional. Franklin Regional boys won an event last year. Um, so it's interesting to see some new faces and um, some places that have just switched um, where they're coaching for um, better, um, for, for a lot of different reasons, I imagine. Okay, so um, 53 for the girls, double A, looks to be um, Kirsten O'Connor from Mont Pleasant High School, 2261 which is faster than the fastest AAA time. Mont Pleasant, Lily King has the state record on this, but Mont Pleasant's um, her teammate is number one seed. And then comes Thomas Jefferson, second seed, third seed, Quaker Valley, fourth seed is from Springfield Township, that's um, District 7, York Suburban, then a, a Woodland Hill Summers coming in here at the sixth seed, a ninth grader. And um, so once again, the fastest individual girl swimmer in the meet, seed time projected is a double A swimmer. We're skipping diving. Sorry about that. Just can't project that. Um, we're going on to the Hunter Butterfly, fastest seed. Hatborough, Horsham, Swimmer, Annie Jaw, 53-83 for the big schools. Then comes um, third place, Natalie Sens from North Allegheny, a senior. Meanwhile, over at Double A, Leah Shackley is going to be something to watch. <laughs> I wish uh, her the best. She's seated with a 51-16, more than two seconds faster than the big schools. Bedford swimmer, phenomenal superstar. Kara Schackengrost from Freeport is a second seed, District 7. Katie Jokovic, another Whippeal swimmer from South Park. She's a senior. She's going to go to University of Cincinnati is um, the third seed and um, we also have in the sixth seed an indiana swimmer there's a seventh seed gateway swimmer gateway had um, an opportunity to win the 200 freestyle and they did in pre at um, whippeals but the, got disqualified it was uh, um, one of the heartbreakers of the um, the Whippeal Championships for me watching them, but they came back and they were able to finish fourth in the 400 free relay, um, which was um, fantastic for them. So let's see where Gateway is in the 400 free relay. They're seated 16th. So they're on the bubble. Um, no, yeah, that's relay points, sorry. I had that wrong 400 freestyle relay gateway is seventh in the seed times for make they make a big final that would be um, phenomenal for their 400 free relay okay moving on girls 100 freestyle big schools number one seed from state college molly workman Time 50.16. Right behind there is Upper St. Clair, second seed, Caitlin Connors, senior Upper St. Clair, 50.30. And then comes a Unionville, Sarah Parker from Hatsboro, 50.9. So there are four young ladies in double AAA that are 50 point. Meanwhile, in the double A, in the girls 100 freestyle, our number one seed is Lily King. She's doing the 100 and 200. She's seated with a 48.21. Elsie Nardozzi from Northgate, senior, 49.98. So we have two swimmers under 50 that are would be one and two even in the big schools. And then comes Katie Djokovic from South Park, 
36. The four seed, another Whippeal swimmer, Cody from TJ. So the top four swimmers in double A girls, Hunter Free, are all from District 7. Next event, the 500 freestyle. Let's look at the big schools. Nora, number one seed. Nora Webster from Wisha Shockton, 451.62. Second North Penn swimmer, 452. Then it jumps to 457 for the third seed. Then comes Claire Baku from North Allegheny, 457. That was fourth seed. Meanwhile, in the 500 free, Lewisburg, 455. Kimberly Shannon, local swimmer, I imagine. She's um, a senior. Then comes Shadyside Academy freshman, Ava Jokums. She's a ninth grader, of course, 45604. That would put her in the third seed in the um, AAA, but she's our second seed. And then comes Eliza Miller, Kiski area, 50047. Maybe she breaks the five minute mark and she's um, the second seed. So um, the Whippeal's not quite as powerful in the 500 free with neither the double A AA or triple A being a Whippeal swimmer as far as the number one seed, but um, still well represented. Moving on, the 200 free relay. Cathedral Prep comes in with a small school as the one seed there at 138.05. Meanwhile, Hatboro Horsham's number one seed, 134. Then comes um, North Allegheny, Fox Chapel, Upper St. Clair, all running up. Okay, here's one, something I wanted to point out. Um, Taylor Allardyce, District 8, 200 yard free relay. 156.15. Ugh. That's um, more than 10 seconds behind the next slowest swimmers from Williamsport. And then above that, you know, is McDonald. You know, so, you know, at 35th place is a 142. So, you know, I hate to see that, but. It's the fact of the matter is um, the way they qualify and have arranged this Pittsburgh stuff. So um, 400 free relay, North Allegheny, second, Fox Chapel, third, Upper St. Clair, fourth. But they got some screaming fast times ahead of them from the Barrow team. Whereas um, in the girls 200 free relay, uh, Lily King doesn't swim this event. She does the medley and the 400 free relay. So that drops Mont Pleasant down to a sixth seed, but it's Cathedral Prep, then Northgate, Springfield. Now, Cathedral Prep's 138.0, Northgate 139.6, Springfield 139.7. So that'll be a tight one in the beginning um, of the second, at the end of the first day. So um, Kiski areas. Is, is, Plugging away and they're in fifth, right by Mont Pleasant, which is sixth. Moving on to the girls, 100 backstroke, Leah Shackley, number one seed, of course, in the small schools, super time at 50.43. And then there's five second gap into Laney Sheets, who did a 55.3 with that modified time in Kirsten O'Connor, Mont Pleasant, 55.37 for third, and then comes the Cathedral Prep. Meanwhile, Sylvia Roy, Mount Lebanon star, 54-10 is the first seed, still not as fast as Leah, of course, on the um, double A. Then comes an East Strasburg, 54-5, Lower Marion, 54-6. So um, it'll be fantastic to watch Miss Leah Shackley burned from Bedford on her backstroke events. 
coming up on the girls' 100 breaststroke, we have, um, meanwhile, let's go one more time. Backstroke for her Alder Dice, 107. Next fastest, she's 38 seed. Next fastest was um, somebody from District 12 with a 101. So that's 107 is a um, not in the ballpark here. Girls, 100 breaststroke, Natalie Sens, North Allegheny, 102.5. Upper Dublin has a 102.8, 103, 103, 103, 103. There's a lot of 103s taking it down to, to position seven. Meanwhile, in the girls' double A, fastest time, 101.9, faster than the, the big schools, a knock swimmer, Gianna. Lavriel, Lav oh boy, this is why I got Bobby O that helps out on the um, the double A the, the broadcasts for the trip. Lavriani, Lav or Ini, Gianna Lavriani, then Peyton Scott from Indiana, one oh two flat, second f fastest time in the meet, second seed in a double A. Then comes um, a swimmer from Moreland, 103.3, and then it jumps to Abigail King from Kiski, 105.7. So Abigail King from Kiski area is the fourth seed, but she's in with a 105. Now that would put her back in the 13th or 14th spot in the triple A. But as far as the elite swimmers go, the fastest are showing up again in the double I meet. Now let's go down to the girls. 400 free relay. Number one seed, Hatborough Horsham. Number two, Upper Dublin. Third is Fox Chapel. Fourth is North Allegheny. Meanwhile, Kiski area is the number one seed going into the 400 free relay. Their time was 335.29. And um, our dub, our relays for Hatsboro is 124.5, 128 was second Upper Dublin. You know, Fox Chapel was 129. So the relay power, North Allegheny's relays 330.7, is um, much more prevalent in the big schools. So they'll be um, lighting it up. And I think um, it's going to be a, an interesting go, even for Kiski. 335 Northgate was 336 Dallas, 337. Mott Pleasant is seated here at fifth, and they'll have Lily King maybe as an anchor. Maybe she'll lead off. But that'll be something to watch on the 400 free relay, see if Kiski area can repeat. So quickly, again, rundown <coughs> on the schools, on the total points. I had um, looked at relays, looked at um, team totals, expected win, Mont Pleasant, 154, Northgate, 130, Cathedral Prep, 129, Kiski, 117, Indiana, 100. So those are the top five, a double A, without diving points. I think Mont Pleasant did have a, a diver score points. Meanwhile, you have to go down to the fifth place to have North Allegheny at 175. Fox Chapel is at first at 199. Then comes Wilson, Upper Dublin, Hatsboro, 177. They got places to move up as well. Another thing I want to advocate and while I have your attention is the idea of a third classification. We have 3A, 2A. That's great. Let's not mess it up. Now, there are some teams that need to bounce from one side to the other. Like a Kiski area team I mentioned. I think they're probably going up to the, the bigger schools. I know Woodland Hills is going to be a big school again for the next two-year cycle. So some teams are sort of borderline or they straddle. Sometimes they're small schools. Sometimes they're big schools. And that's a little bit fussy. You have to get, redo the sections and such. But anyways, how about a third class? But I don't want it to be the tiniest schools in class single A, 
we should have a third class that is based more upon the support and the ability to field a competitive team. And there are plenty of schools, like for instance, in our WPIAL, 142 schools. Only 70 of them have field varsity swim teams. What about providing a swim experience for those other 70 schools that don't have swimming? Now, a few of them can have a star or a fast club swimmer, and they get to drop into the, um, the meets, and that's all f well and good. But I think we could build a better third class that had nothing to do with the size of your enrollment but had more to do with your ability to have a quality or varsity swim team that's worthy of it. Case in point, let's talk about Pittsburgh, where my city is. Perry High School, a big school, or Brashear High School, does have a team, Perry does not. Well, I don't think those schools should be swimming against Bethel Park or Upper St. Clair or Mount Lebanon or North Hills. Our WPIAL story is an interesting one, and I want to share, and I'll talk a more about that at the very end, especially with Alderdice. But we should be able to have a swimming experience at Westinghouse, at UPrep, at Perry, and at other schools that have I don't want to say weak, I want to say fledgling, or but frail or more frail swimming opportunities. So that's one of my wishes and one of my desires is to create an extra class of swimming in Pennsylvania so that we can do lifeguard training, we can play water polo, we can build swim instruction, especially among those programs that don't generally have strong swimming support. And it would help make a better 3A and 2A experience for those teams that are solid. And it would make for a better experience for hundreds, if not thousands of other kids that should really be able to go to their pools or go to a, a neighboring district pools and be able to swim and have a swim experience. But to make that happen, we're gonna have to bend some rules and be creative and I think I've got just some of those solutions to pitch to you later under the umbrella of what I call an I-League. Okay, but let's get on to the meet. In Pittsburgh, the team, big school, AAA school, Alderdice Dragons are entered into the state championships and they find their way to the state championships by winning their district, which is District 8, at a meet that held on a Tuesday and Wednesday at 10.30 in the morning, and there were um, four teams. Uh, Alderdice, Pittsburgh Obama, Carrick, and Brashear. You won your event, you got an automatic ticket to the state championships. Back in the day, I coached in the city, you had to meet a time standard. And if you didn't go a certain time that was respectable, you were not put into the state championships. So you had to win your event and make a time standard. We need to have that time standard come back into the District 8 meet. But it'd be way better because the boys of District 8 had to go up to District 10 to qualify. And they had their meet up at Spire. And if you win there against some of the Erie teams, okay, then you got a free ticket to go to states and that made it much more competitive. So. Better yet than having a time standard for the city kids to advance the state would be to have our girls teams also join the boys team up at District 10. But even the best solution is what we had in the past. The team from Obama and the team from Alderdice were part of the WPIAL. And I fought hard on athletic reform to join the WPIAL. So we dismantled our swimming city championships. You still could have had a meet, like a conference meet, but the Obama swimmers went into the Whippeal Class AA, and the Alderdice swimmers went into the Whippeal District 7 Class AAA, 
And then they had a great hometown experience at the Whippeals that the kids don't get anymore. So I was very upset to see the city swimming teams pull out of the WPIAL. We got to get them back in there. But furthermore, we got to do a better job so that there's not some slow lane eight last swimmer from Alderdice clogging up, especially the girls triple A meet. Um, those spots should be for other state swimmers. And uh, even better, let's go back and address this idea of a single a classification or the I League, and then some of the other schools like Carrick and Brashear could um, pool their resources with, with other people and we could have a league experience that was well worthwhile and much more productive for those swimmers and kids as well as their coaches, as well as their opponents. Yeah.